we have to stop making each other feel bad for being who we are. If you fell down a flight of steps and you broke your leg and it was backwards, you gonna go to the ER, right? I'm pretty sure you're not just gonna keep hopping around with a leg that's broken backwards. It's the same thing with your brain. When your mind is having issues, when your mind can't seem to get back on track or your mood has significantly changed, you've got to go and work on that and go to the proper people to help you fix it. Just like you would that broken leg. You can't walk around with a broken leg you definitely don't want to walk around with a broken mind. What's up y'all, it's your girl Dr. Nina and today I want to come at you guys and talk about this mental health crisis that has been going on. Let's be clear. However, now I feel it's getting a bit more publicity with the recent suicides of people like Kate Spade, Anthony Bourdain, who I loved Anthony. There's had to be a lot more spotlight placed on mental illness. We find it really hard to get candid about this and really talk about it the way that it should be, especially in minority communities. And then I'm going to take it deeper, especially in African American communities and all of us as humans. I just think that it's something that's just not discussed, especially from childhood. We're taught to kind of go on our own with emotions instead of learning what they mean, what happens to us, how they affect us. And how different disorders like anxiety disorder, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, borderline personality disorder, all of these different disorders and specifically depression, which has really been coming up, how to even cope with those feelings when so many people feel that automatically something is wrong with you if your emotions are off kilter or off balance or what we like to call normal, which we know ain't always that normal. So today I come to you to not only talk to you about it from a psychological perspective, I'm not here to do that, but I'm also just gonna give you guys some ins and outs of things, give you some things to think about and maybe lead you to some things that you can research. And I definitely want this to help us better protect ourselves and our loved ones. And I also wanna say related to this, I am being honored this year at the Houston Black Business Expo. I am so excited. And the greatest thing about it is on August 4th with this, it is free to the public to attend. So I urge that you click the link down in the info section and go ahead and reserve your ticket. And there are a limited amount of tickets. I plan to not only speak, but spend some time with my loyal and faithful subscribers and followers. And one of the biggest things I wanna focus on is mental health and also wellness. I'm being honored for being in this health space and I'm so excited and I'm so excited to get back to you guys. And I'm so honored to be honored. I don't even know any other word and I'm humbled by it. So hopefully I'll see you guys there. Make sure you thumbs up this video if you like it. Comment, share, and subscribe to this channel and also my vlog channel. Make sure that you come back on all Thursdays and some Sundays for video uploads. And also be sure to turn on that notification bell so you know when I, I upload. I cannot deliver everything in one video. I do know that much. However, I can share a little bit more and try and help and educate as much as I can. To talk about why I think we don't talk about mental health, mental illness, mental wellness, all of these disorders and problems a lot. Nobody wants to explore the grand frontier that they don't know. And a lot of times we don't know a whole lot about what people are experiencing when they have mental illness. And so we don't like touching stuff that we're unfamiliar with. And so therefore what we do is we get very negative about it and we start to make those people feel ostracized, alone, judged, and by themselves. And that is where the problems start to seep in. We have to stop making each other feel bad for being who we are. Some of these people that walk around telling other people that they are crazy for going to therapy are the very ones that need to check themselves and back up from the situation and maybe see what help they need to put in place. I've known people my whole life that are just now having the discussions of having mental illness. It's almost like telling each other is a horrible thing. And once you know that that person has mental illness, we automatically want to stay away from them. They become the crazy person. We don't want to deal with them. And I think 
it's just the opposite. So many of us struggle with so many things day by day and we're not being honest about it. And I think we gotta be more honest about it. We gotta be more caring towards each other. We gotta be more kind, compassionate, empathetic. I didn't say sympathetic, I said empathetic, meaning that we at least try to put ourselves in their shoes. Everybody doesn't walk through life like we do. I, I feel like I'm a quite a strong girl and I realize a lot of people don't want to go through a lot of the stuff I've been through, nor can they handle that. And I'm not going to make them feel bad for that. What I'm going to say is strengthen where you are. But nobody should be made to feel bad for skills that they're not taught. We're not taught emotional skills. We're not taught how to take care of ourselves emotionally. We need to teach people about emotions. It's not just two emotions out here. It's not just <laughs> mad and glad. It starts there, educating yourself. And it also starts with our parents allowing children to work through their emotions. A child has the right to get angry. A child has the right to get sad. A child has the right to be happy. A child has the right to be kind of solemn and sit back and quiet. We like to tell them instantly, stop being so emotional. And I think as long as they're not harming themselves or others, allow them to learn how to work through that because the world is already gonna criticize them enough. And I don't think we should start off early by telling kids how they should feel all the time because they turn into adults who are emotionally unwise and emotionally make bad decisions and emotionally don't understand themselves and don't try to understand the emotions of others, which leads to horrible issues. And if someone tells you that they're seeking help or thinking about seeking help, let them know that that's okay and that's probably the best thing for them. I've gone to therapy a lot of my life. It just keeps me grounded and rooted. It keeps me being able to express my feelings. I am a person who has helped so many people. I have to make sure my mind is on track. I've seen experiences that people should probably never experience and therefore you have to always be emptying your mind and make sure that you stay as healthy as possible because mental illness affects every other facet of your life. You can become sick. Mental illness actually causes physical illness. Everything begins with the mind and once we remember that, we'll treat each other better. So as I mentioned, the world has been rocked by two publicized suicides. So I say publicized because suicide happens daily. It happens at high rates and people often feel that it is their only way out. As a person who has worked in the space of those who are in suicidal crisis, it's not something to be joked about. It's not something to be taken lightly. It's not something to play with. It's something to really think about and really hone in on trying to keep that person safe and not just say that it's their issue. It doesn't just affect the person that might end up taking their own lives, but it affects the lives of their families, their friends, people around them. And it can sometimes strike a chord and cause others to follow suit of suicide. So with these two highly publicized suicides, I feel that more people have become sensitive to mental health issues. And of course it's the hot thing right now. And I think we have to be careful about that because for so many years, mental health has been an issue. It's been a tragic issue. But at the same time, I think that this highlights it enough for people to realize that you can, according to the world, have the whole world. You can have it all. And there can still be, in your mind, hopelessness. I get very, very emotional thinking about this because I've not only been around people who were in a suicidal crisis mode. I've also helped to, you know, treat and, and try to move beyond that. And then also just even Anthony Bourdain for me was a big one because Justin, he's really into cooking as I've shown you guys before. And he really introduced me to the world of Anthony Bourdain and I had really gotten into him and to his story and all of the things that he did and all the countries he went to and all of the tables he sat at and all of the wealth of knowledge that he seemed to bring. And a lot of people didn't even know that in the past he had heavily struggled with addiction uh, to different drugs. I think even alcoholism 
autism and lots of other things and he's had some troubled issues in the past and same thing with Kate Spade you know just hearing about her background and some of the things that we're hearing coming out issues with depression and different things like that and I'm not going to just talk about them but the thing about suicide is I think it's almost like people joke about it you know so you hear often people will say well so-and-so said they were going to kill themselves you know I don't believe them and you know we don't believe them until it happens okay now my first thing is and we're going to move into depression because I'm going to give you guys some signs and symptoms to look for but I think that a lot of times we just don't take people seriously and with suicide there's a lot to look for and basically what you usually see with those who are going through this is not just depression not just anxiety not just different issues with that they usually start to kind of withdraw they start to not care about things as much they might start giving away things that they once treasured a lot or you know give away things that are prized possessions they might start going on spending sprees things like that things that really indicate to one that knows them that they don't plan on being here tomorrow. They might even start to talk about death a lot or start to discuss life without them as if they're not going to exist longer than the moment or maybe far from the moment. I'm not going to get into a lot of the clinical terms that go with this, but I want you guys to start to clue in to those around you. And this is in no way meant for you to diagnose, <laughs> but you definitely want to start to ask people um how they're feeling i have my students go through something called qpr training it's question persuade and refer and basically through those steps you listen to a person especially if they start to exhibit some of those odd or different behaviors or talking about death or are insinuating that they won't be around for long or even kind of bringing up the possibility of suicide you question them you ask them if they're safe if they're okay. You maybe even ask if they have a means to complete said suicide or if they're talking about it, if they have guns or weapons or if they have access to certain things that could assist in this situation. You also want to uh, pull out what could be happening in their lives and you want to persuade. When I say persuade, in that moment, you want them to feel supported. You want them to feel like you're listening, like you're not just writing them off and also that you support them in a way like none other. One thing is we say we like to support each other, but when someone is talking about killing themselves or talking about death or talking about a lot of issues, we need to volunteer to get them to help and make sure they go through with that help. And if that means staying with them until that help arrives or staying with them and driving them to that help, that's the kind of action you need. That kind heart, that kind mind, non-judgmental. A lot of times one of the first things we like to do is to tell a person, why would you want to kill yourself? You, you should never want to kill yourself. I mean, you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what that person has experienced. You don't know what they've seen. You don't know what walking in their shoes is. Everyone is not going to share with you their true experience. It's just not going to happen. And sometimes things have happened behind the scenes. If someone's been raped, if someone's been harmed, if all their money has has been taken if they've been abused repeatedly and times and things that you don't know about they might feel that this is their only option and so that's where it's time for you to be able to question and ask without judging them or telling them what they need to do if someone wants to contemplate suicide you don't immediately want them to feel alienated because you start to say well you don't need to kill yourself and that's stupid and blah 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 eh. I mean, think about a time where you've been angry or upset. Do you want people to tell you you're stupid for being angry or upset? Probably not. And this is just as, if not more severe. And with that, you also want to refer. You want to make sure you get them somewhere where they can get some help. Be it if you think it's a really serious situation, maybe convince them to go to the hospital so that you can get them into the ER where they can possibly find treatment, psychological or psychiatric treatment, and get the help that they need. That's just a, a short rundown of it. I've placed some links down below about suicide, about question, persuade, and refer 
refer. I think it's an awesome thing, especially college students. A lot of colleges have the training for free. Suicide is like the second highest cause of death in students in college, and it's really high for the overall population. But other things are out there, certain resources, things like that. And if you are feeling that you might harm yourself and you feel alone and you have nobody, definitely reach out to hotlines. Definitely get up, go seek help, seek treatment, check yourself into a hospital. They know how to get you the help that you need. You are not alone. And even if you feel alone, there's many more people in this world that experience suicidal thoughts than are discussed because it's stigmatized, because we look at it so negatively. And yeah, I can speak about it because I've been around it. I've maybe been overly exposed to different people who have even contemplated suicide or even been close to or around those that have completed suicide. I know it's not a fluke. Those who have means, have, have different issues, have a lot of factors in their lives that are not adding up to be supportive for them, to help them see hope, um, then that might be their thought of the way out. It's one thing to feel hopeless, and the world doesn't acknowledge that, but a lot of stuff happens at that brink. And we start to see acting out and we start to see suppressing of feelings by picking up substances or drinking heavily or engaging in other risky behaviors. We just write it off as that's the crazy person or that's the person who has issues. Instead of if we say we love them, making sure that they have the help that they need. You always make sure that you have a plan with that person. Person. Make sure that you know that they get to a safe place. Stay with them until we know that they have sought immediate help. Something to put them in a place where they cannot have the means to harming themselves or anyone else. And so I think that that's something we really have to consider. And this leads me into depression. One thing that I know for sure because I've done research on it. I'm even gonna place some links to some of the journal articles that I've written that you all could possibly access, but depression is very much more normal than it is abnormal. It is when a person stays in a depressive state for especially six months to a year or more, it really becomes an issue without any relief. What I mean is not only do I treat those with mental health issues, however, I have also battled with depression. I've been very open with that, very honest about that in my past, dealing with that. And that's when I understood that it was normal. It shouldn't be stigmatized because our moods have different processes. At different times in your life, you go through different things. You have chemical balances and imbalances in your body. Different things change. A lot of the messages I got from you guys were, what do you look for? And not just yourself, but in other people. They might start to withdraw from friends and family, but usually for no apparent reason. Their appearance might start to change, so there might be a significant weight gain or significant weight loss. There will probably be some loss loss in appetite or an increase in appetite. A loss in desire to look a certain way. So if they once really took care of their appearance, they might start to go the opposite direction. They might also, or you might also feel that you're irritable all the time. I think we always associate depression with sadness. And while it does involve a lot of sadness, it's also like irritability, feeling just uncomfortable in your skin, feeling uncomfortable around other people. Everything that once made you happy now annoys you. You might also find that you just want to be alone. You want to be in a darker place. Nothing makes you happy. You might feel that no matter what you do, there's no mood regulation. You have no ups and downs. You only feel down. What we tend to do is think that people who are depressed are just crazy. And what we don't realize is many of us experience depression, just not for very long periods of time. If you've ever experienced the deep sadness where you don't really know where it came from, I know from mine, I've expressed to you guys, it comes seasonally. So I almost know like clockwork. At the end of October to mid-November, I am a little bit different. And I know it's due to the change in seasons. And for some people that happens and that's like a seasonal affective thing. You have to be very careful. A depressed person doesn't always wanna hear that they just need to get happy 
If it was just that easy, then I'm pretty sure they would choose that button or choose that path, but it's not that simple. And one thing that I say about those who are depressed is you gotta be careful because sometimes we like to push them into the suicidal space. And those who are depressed are not always suicidal. And again, I don't always believe that those who are suicidal are always depressed. There's different reasons for taking your own life. And we won't always understand that because nobody here on earth has completed a suicide and still lived. I think that's why it's so hard for us to understand. It's so hard to even question those things. And if you've ever been around a person who's depressed, it just almost seems like they've reached a brink of hopelessness. Nothing seems uh, worth it. Nothing seems good. Urge that person or take that person somewhere where they can seek help and counsel so that they don't end up feeling that something like suicide is the only way out. You also don't want to stigmatize them. Don't make them feel like, you know, it's stupid for them to feel that way. Once again, you don't want people to feel like uh, they're alone or that they shouldn't talk about it because if they don't, they're more likely to go that route because nobody understands and they feel judged and criticized. There's a lot of people out here walking around with depression and we stigmatized it so much that people hide behind these fake facades. So they might seem to be having the world. They might be highly paid. They might have a great job. They might have a great family, but they might be hiding some level of sadness. And that doesn't mean you need to go looking for sadness. But if you experience that someone is always irritable, always sad, nothing makes them happy. They don't even engage in the things they used to. Their appearance is changing. Some of these things are even very big red flags and so I've placed some links down below about depression for you guys as well. Just handle people gently. It's interesting because we as human beings are very selfish with our feelings, thoughts, and emotions and moods. We want to experience things but when somebody is a little bit more emotional than we are, we don't want to be bothered. You have to elect to at least try to get them to the help that they might need and everybody who's you know, a little quieter, a little less talkative. That doesn't mean they're depressed either. You don't need to be going around diagnosing everybody. That's not what we are talking about. But you do need to be watchful of really distinct changes in mood. You know, our gut feelings without even clinical training. Our gut feelings tell us a lot about when people have changed. And I think the reason why we stigmatize it is sometimes these people seem to be quite unbearable to be around. They don't seem to be fun or pleasurable. Again, we like to be around fun, pleasurable, people. So when somebody is a downer to us, we tend to want to get away from them. But that might be a time for you to really clue into your friend or family member who's having issues because they're probably crying out for help without crying. And nobody really wants to admit that they're depressed. And that goes for any mental illness. A lot of people don't want to because of the social stigma placed on it. I think someone asked me in one of the questions on Instagram is what do I think about the way that it's covered like in the media how suicides are covered i think we instantly go to how we remember that person oh that person was great they were amazing we don't know what happened with them and i think what we fail to do is be more open and honest about the situation so that we save more lives i think in the situations of like i said anthony bourdain k spade i think we are talking a lot about all the great legacy that they've left behind and those types of things and we do hear some things about their family troubles that they had but that's not really touched on as much as I would think. I'm sure many people notice different things about them changing and even if they don't want to admit it the way that we cover things is almost sometimes a glorification almost sometimes without hope of seeking treatment it almost leaves us hanging off of a cliff and not knowing what direction to go. I feel like media and now social media cover it in a way that almost glorifies it. Instead of making sure that people seek the help that they need, instead of really making sure that people understand that it's normal to have issues, it's normal to struggle in life. It's normal that even if the world thinks that you have it all, to feel like you have nothing at all. We're not getting to the meat and potatoes and so less people are being helped. I think less people are really given a really strong look at what it means 
to have mental illness and to be suicidal. So we kind of glaze over the hard part. We kind of glaze over the issues those people had and we kind of touch over them and hope that we fill in the blank somehow. And then you have another person that follows in those same footsteps. I urge you guys to do better. I'm gonna have hotlines, I'm gonna have links to kind of educate yourself just quickly. You don't have to know everything because what you're gonna do when you find that a person has issues, you're gonna try and get them to the proper help. I was also asked about how do I think that this plays into, you know, especially black communities, not just black communities, but highly religious communities. I hear a lot of times that, well, God will heal you. And if you have mental illness, you just need to go to God. While I believe it's great to go to God, I also believe that the Bible says that faith without work is dead. If you don't put in what's needed to get to the next level or to get to a happy space or a better space and do self care and really get the help you need, then how are you gonna expect for God to work through anything for you to get better? And furthermore, God has anointed the hands of those who are trained to provide help. It is not just help to just pray. I think you can pray and also pray over those who will treat you. You know, God has them in their hands of protection and that you have the best care possible so that you can have the best life possible. Just praying, I don't care who get upset with me, it's not okay because we find that it, it festers and people start to hide things and they start to lie about things and then the next thing we know they have spiraled out of control maybe committed suicide hurt other people um you know if there's abuse going on they continue to pass that abuse down because they have not been properly educated or treated praying it away is only a part of it pray for going for the help that you need asking that God work through those who are going to help you. I think that is how you get the proper help through prayer. And so I think we have to stop telling people that they can solve their issues because what we do is we make them feel broken. We make them feel abnormal once again when it's quite normal to have issues with mood and have mood disturbances and other issues. I think that we have to be very much more careful about how we nurture people and we make them feel okay for receiving help. This is how I feel about mental health. If you fell down a flight of steps and you broke your leg and it was backwards, you gonna go to the ER, right? I'm pretty sure you're not just gonna keep hopping around with a leg that's broken backwards. It's the same thing with your brain. When your mind is having issues, when your mind can't seem to get back on track or your mood has significantly changed, you've got to go and work on that and go to the proper people to help you fix it. Just like you would that broken leg. You can't walk around with a broken leg you definitely don't wanna walk around with a broken mind. The other thing is to really um, feel okay with where you are. I encourage this in many of my videos. We have got to stop this comparison game and stop trying to be just like everybody else. We are who we are, we are how we are. Where someone else is right now is meant for them. This is where they were supposed to be. This is how they're supposed to be. Where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be. If you're feeling like you need help, that's okay. Seek the help, seek the treatment that you need. Don't allow people to make you feel bad for wanting to be better. Just like you might wanna lose weight, you might wanna make sure your mind is okay. Being behind in life, there is no behind because we all have our own track, pace, and goal. And even those people that you're comparing yourself to, they have some issue, something that they're behind in, something that doesn't make them feel so good about themselves. And we all struggle with something. We're all on this earth, we're all human. And so that's always something that I want to make sure I place back in your mind is that you're normal, you're fine. And some of us need a little extra help and guidance every now and again, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Does that tarnish you? No. And finally, I wanna talk about staying motivated during the storm or in spite of the storm. One thing I like to look at life like, this is something that I've, I've built up within myself over the years is that I expect that life will happen. I expect that life will change. I expect that anything good can turn bad and anything bad is going to turn good because nothing stays the same forever. It's about your ability to learn to regulate during those storms, to learn to self-soothe, 
to learn to have a circle of support and when you don't have that seeking the help you need to become better and that's what I challenge you to do don't get down in the dumps about where you are or feeling bad it's when you stay in that place a little too long that it becomes a problem and that it becomes a, a question and it becomes something that should be highlighted and should be helped. In spite of the storm, it's time that we start to equip ourselves with knowledge, with help, with good guidance, with those who don't judge us, in order for us to get through those storms and realize that trouble just does not last always. It won't, but your life will have ups and downs and when I tell y'all I've had to build a level of mental toughness I've had to learn that life's ups and downs don't define me that I am who I am in spite of and that's something that we have to continue to instill especially in our youth support them in being resilient support them in being strong support them in being persevering and tough but also allowing them to explore and express emotion I think we even stigmatize emotion because a lot of people don't have experience with emotion and so we like to tell people People that are emotional or explore emotions a little bit more or expose emotions a little bit more that they're crazy there is a huge issue when you will not acknowledge emotions and emotional differences and changes that's how we communicate correspond and cope we have got to normalize this so like I said I could talk about this all day and I know that there's different angles that I could have come at but that was what was put on my heart today I hope that you guys learned just a little bit of something today and that you all will chime in. I want to have a discussion here. I want us to get into this and, and really chat about this and really take this time to talk. Thanks so much guys for watching once again. And again, I cannot stress this enough. If you're feeling that suicide is your only answer, if you're feeling alone, afraid, seek help, call the hotline number. Get yourself to a hospital. If you feel that you can't talk to anyone, do that. If you know you have at least a friend who won't judge you, call them, reach out. And if you are the friend, reach back. Listen to your friends, hear your family, hear their thoughts. Don't dismiss them. Thanks so much for watching guys. Beautiful brown baby doll, peace. Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.